Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So working on the uh, LeBlanc lathe restoration and uh, in this video series I think we're going to start tackling the uh, quick change gearbox uh, that changes uh, the feeds uh, for both the uh, uh, threading as well as just your, your feed for removing metal on the lathe. Uh, we pulled this off earlier and uh, all in all it's in good shape as it is but um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to probably not do a total disassemble on this but we're going to take it mostly apart uh, if for no other reason just to be able to get in there and clean this thing up and then get it prepped uh, for painting and uh, then we'll put it all back together. While we're in here uh, I thought I'd go ahead and kind of give you guys a close up of exactly how this thing works how the gears change uh, to get the different uh, ratios between the gears to be able to change uh, your feeds uh, on the lathe. So uh, with that, I think I'll get you in here a little bit closer and uh, we'll show you how it all works. I got you zoomed in here on the front of the uh, gearbox and um, Basically, the way you operate this is there's two ranges of uh, levers in here, and you put these in different combinations to either get the feed or the thread pitch uh, that you're wanting. Now, there's this plate here, and uh, this is very worn. All the paint's off of it. It's very difficult to read. We're going to actually do a restoration on this plate later on where we can actually read the information on there again. Normally, this was uh, up here in the top. Uh, I had already previously removed it in another video, uh, but it contains the information that you need. And, and you guys probably can't read this. Uh, I can barely read it myself, but if you look on this side here, there's A, B, C, A, B, C, D. And uh, what this is referring to is what uh, position this uh, index here is. So this goes back and forth, there's four notches, it's A, B, C, D. It's stamped on here. Again, you probably can't see it. There's also a little diagram on the plate that shows uh, what they are right here. Again, you probably can't see it. Uh, but depending on which uh, one of these ranges you're in, and then across the bottom here, there's little arrows, and it says it points down basically to the notches in this. And uh, so if you're in A and in this first notch, uh, your threads are, thread pitch is two and seven eighths uh, threads per inch and your feed is 80 thousandths. Uh, you know, if you go to the other end of the range, you know, if you're in D and all the way over on the right side, you got 96 threads per inch or your feed is, let me read that. Okay, that's a two and a half thousandths uh, is what that is, 0 0.0025. So uh, again, it, it gives you the information to be able to put these, these selectors into the right positions. Uh, and to do it, you just there's a little spring-loaded lever. You pull it up on this one. Uh, it moves with some tumblers back and forth, and we'll look at the back here in a minute and show you how that works. But you get into the position that you want, bring it back up, drop it back into the hole. Down here, similar thing, you pull it back, and uh, you know it, it, your shaft will be turning while this is going so it makes it easier for these gears to mesh but you would uh, could go to any of these uh, four selectors there uh, and you know from the front end of the machine that's what you see and it's fairly simple you just look on the plate find what either feed or thread pitch you want and uh, get it into the right combination uh, to get that to happen so I guess so what people really want to see is the other side of this, the side that you normally don't see, so that you can see how these are changing uh, the, the different gear ratios to give you what you want. So here's the, uh, the business end of this thing where you can actually see what's going on. If you look, the first thing we have is we have a, you know, like a Christmas tree here with different uh, gears on here. I call it a Christmas tree because it's varying a uh, number of uh, thread or uh, teeth, depending on which gear you go to. And uh, this is the input up here. So this is where the, basically the gears are, are the, the big change gears on the side. So when the spindle is turning, every time the spindle turns around, you know, this shaft here is turning at some given 
revolution. So this shaft here, the input shaft, is always turning at a constant speed, or maybe not a constant speed, but relative to the speed of the spindle is turning in a ratio to that. So and I don't know what that ratio it is. It depends on what uh, the gears that they have on there. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's all been figured out. That's really not important, but basically, again, depending on, you know, your, your speed of your spindle, this is always turning in some direct relationship to that. And that ratio does not change uh, unless you change those change gears, which you're not going to be doing uh, under normal circumstances. So now in here, uh, this shaft goes in here. You really can't see it, but back here in the back, I'll tell you what, let me zoom you in. Maybe you can see it. All right, so if you look in the back back there, there's that, the shaft, this shaft right back in here. Um, that's that same shaft that's coming from the input. And if you look, that shaft has some splines on it. And uh, inside this little uh, traveler here that moves back and forth in the back, there's a gear that uh, is on that spline. Uh, that spline is designed so that it will, will, uh, slide back and forth on this shaft back here and uh, so there's a gear in there and then that gear engages the the gear here and this gear here is going to engage a particular gear on this train so as you can see when you when you pull this out of the out it rem pulls the gear back so that it's disengaged you can freely slide this back and forth find the uh, the gear you want to re-engage and come back up and when it clicks into the back it re-engages there and I'm going to zoom you out now maybe you can see that a little bit better so again you can see back here in the back I'm going to pull this uh, lever down slide it and uh, engage it in whichever uh, whichever gear I want There we go. And by doing that, every time you do that, you're changing the rate, the gear ratio from this uh, driven spindle to this Christmas tree here. And um, this uh, set of gears here then goes to another uh, range, uh, which is that ABCD selector, which is down here in the bottom. And uh, that gives you a whole another set of range. So there's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different slots on here. Four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight different slots on here. And then there's four combinations down here in the bottom to give you another set of ratios off of that. And uh, let me show you, see if I can show you how that one works. So now you're looking here and um, the Christmas tree that's coming here is always gonna be engaged down here to this gear on the bottom. And this gear is gonna drive this counter shaft and uh, there are uh, another set of gears behind this that actually goes to your output gear. Your output gear is over here on the other side. This is what's going to the uh, uh, feed screw on the lathe or the feed rod on the lathe. And uh, that's will engage both the feeds and the uh, threads uh, on, the, on the carriage uh, down the line. So again, when you turn this, you know, we're turning here, but then uh, these gears in here will actually engage. There's another set of gears back here behind. There's four different options there. And depending on uh, which uh, slot you put this in, it's gonna depend on which gear engages. So over to the, in the A position, um, this gear here is directly engaging into a a uh, little small gear here on the back. You go to the B position. Now this gear, a, a smaller gear to a larger gear, that's engaging into the back. You go to the C position. And now this gear, yet a smaller gear again, is engaging to a larger gear in the back, so a different gear ratio. And then the last one, the D position, this one's kind of interesting because um, you got this, uh, gear that's on the shaft that goes to another gear. This is just an idler gear in the back. It's just rotating on that shaft. But on the side of this gear is some notches. And when you 
go up against it, it act, this gear actually engages into this one. This one's always turning, but it's not engaged on the shaft unless you're over in that position. So uh, again, just depending on the ratios here. And that gives you a, a lot of different combinations of uh, feeds and thread pitches that the lathe is capable of producing. So there you go. There's a quick look in a uh, quick change gearbox and how that works. You know, before the quick change gearbox, uh, most lathes just had a bunch of different gears and you would have change gears on the side of the machine and you would manually go pull off the gears, put the right gear ratios on to get your, your feed that you need for whatever you're doing. It was uh, quite labor intensive to every time you wanted to change this. In fact, I used to have a lathe that had change gears and when you wanted to change a, a thread pitch or change a um, just a feed rate, you know, it might take 15, 20 minutes just to pull the gears off, uh, change them out, put them all back together and get the lathe running again. Uh, the quick change gear box really simplified, greatly simplified that and made, you know, something that used to take 10, 15 minutes to just taking a few seconds and accomplishing the same thing. Uh, and a lot of math, a lot of uh, figuring out uh, to make all this work. And the amazing part is, is that most of this stuff was done uh, all designed long before there were computers and things to help us uh, with all that. So quite an engineering feat. So now what I think we're going to do is go ahead and start tearing this thing down and uh, get it where we can get some of these parts out of here so that we can properly clean this up and get it prepped for painting and then we'll reassemble it all and put it back on the machine. So as I go ahead and start pulling this apart, um, first thing I, I noticed something here, you know, there's, there's these two uh, gear, sets of gears in here, it looks like they're held in place by these two brackets that bolt on here and basically capture theirs. Looks like there's some bearing surfaces in there. But I noticed that one of the bolts is missing. Uh, so I imagine this has been gotten into before and I um, don't know why that didn't go back in, but we'll have to properly fix that. Uh, as we're putting this thing back together, but we're going to go ahead and pull these apart and uh, hopefully it's going to come apart without much trouble. One thing I notice is that these bolts, there's two different lengths and uh, the longer ones go on the this side and the shorter ones go on this side. I'm making notes to myself because I'll probably be watching my own videos when I go to put this stuff back together. All right, let's see. So that just came right off. Um, here's those two sets of gears. You know, these will should come right out of there. Look at there. That bolt there is broken off, but I should be able to get that out. You can see the remains of it in there. Um, someone tightened it up too much and broke it off, sheared it off, and didn't bother to get it out. Uh, but now you can kind of see in here a little bit better and. Uh, you know, see that gear that slides back and forth on that spline piece and then uh, see how this uh, moves back and forth. And now you can really see too these, uh, I was telling you, you know, this, this gear here is just an idler. It just idles on there. But there's a uh, little cogs on here and when you pull that in there it meshes and engages that. So kind of ingenious how they did that. That's pretty good. So what I want to do now is try to remove this shaft down here on the bottom and I'm pretty sure that this whole shaft comes out in this direction um, based on what I've been able to figure out looking at this and uh, down here on the end this is a little collar uh, it's threaded up on there I can see the threads in here and uh, you guys can't really see it but um, and there's really no good way to get in the camera angle in here but there's four holes in this. There's, there's one here, 
Um, they're at 90 degrees. There's one there. There's one there. And there's one there. And I can tell looking at them, three of them have a set screw. One of them, this one right here is just an open hole. And uh, that one right there is so that you can come in here with something like a punch, get it up in there, and that's what you're going to be able to unscrew that thread off of. But first, we need to loosen the uh, three set screws. Uh, so let me find the right one here. And it's just. That's the right one. I'm going to have to get something to help turn that with. See if I can put this on there and get some leverage. Yeah. I think that broke it loose. I'm just going to go ahead and pull them all the way out, I think. So there's one set screw. Let me get the um, other three here. That's screw number two. There's the third one. Actually, no, that is uh, okay, I'm gonna do that's the one that doesn't have any threads in it. I'm gonna mark that one. Oh, there's only three on there. I thought there was four. Okay, so there, there's three instead of four. That makes better sense. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back around here. I'm going to put that in there. That should hold this nut on the end. And I'm going to go to the other side and see if I can unscrew that. Uh, and I'm probably going to have to get something on there to grip that other end to get it to start. All right, so I got a punch down here in that one piece, and I've just got a punch in this one here. There's actually a hole in here where the uh, um, tapered pin goes into, and I can use that as to give me some leverage. And um, let's see. Yeah, that's actually turning very nicely down here on the other end. I can turn it by hand, and I am just unscrewing this little collar on the other side. There it is. Came right off. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put these set screws back in here before I uh, forget which ones they, or before they get lost. And now, with any luck, this whole shaft should come out. And it looks like it's going to, but we got one other little thing to deal with here. All right, I thought there was an issue. There's a little thrust bearing in here, and I wasn't sure how that was on there, but I think it's just going to come right out. So let's see. That gear comes out. That comes out. There's a little thrust bearing that goes up on there. And that shaft comes out. Now, I think what I'm going to do is we're just going to put this all back on here just like it goes. See, there's a keyway right here. 
the uh, thrust bearing goes up on that collar. That goes in right here. And I'm going to put this uh, washer back on the other side. That way I can keep it all straight. And what I'm doing with all these uh, parts like this is uh, I'm taking them over. I've got a parts washer with mineral spirits in it. And for right now, I just took the, the pan out and I've got these things just soaking in the mineral spirits. And later, when we go to clean them up, hopefully that will have allowed all that dried on grease and oil to come off real easily. So I'm gonna go put that in the parts washer. So next thing we wanna do is remove uh, this uh, shaft through here that has the spline on it that engages in the uh, tumbler. And uh, it looks like it's on there just the same way. There's a, a lock collar on here. That set screw's missing. Pull this set screw out. That is the one that we should be able to put our uh, piece into. Let me get something to grip this other side where it won't turn. And should just come right off. And now when it does, with any luck, figure out what's going on here all right guys so uh, there's two little pins here that lock inside here I just took these out and uh, now I'm, I'm just taking a soft blow hammer and the whole uh, I'm gonna have to drive that out it looks like just gonna take a punch down here There we go. There's a uh, little uh, bearing, spin our uh, needle bearing up in there. This should now come all the way through. Another, uh, that's just a plain bearing that fits up in this end. There it comes. I'll go ahead and put that plain bearing back on there where I know where it goes. And this whole assembly comes right out. All right, so you're looking at the bottom of the gearbox now. This is your ABCD selector up here, and I want to pull it off. And I'm sitting here looking at it. Number one, there's a set screw. Again, it's missing, so we'll have to put that back in there. Then there's a uh, tapered pin that goes through here. I can tell that's the big end. Anytime you're dealing with a small end, you always want to, to knock on the, the small end and push it out toward the big end. So I got a punch here. Alright, that pin is on its way out. I'm going to just kind of roll it around. You can see the pin coming out there. And there we go. It's coming apart. And again, just to kind of keep things all together, I'm going to just reassemble it right here. And we'll go let this soak in the 
parts washer. So I'm down now to just the bare casting and uh, what I want to do is go ahead and get the paint stripped off of this uh, so we can get it ready and cleaned up for uh, painting. Uh, it'll probably end up going into the parts washer to get all the oil and grease off the back, but for right now, you know, the citrus strip that I use, um, it eats that oil and grease off very good as well, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to give this thing a good coating and uh, we'll let it sit for a couple of hours. So I'm just going to put some on here and I'm going to take a little paintbrush and we'll just uh, get a no good, nice, thick coat all over this, particularly on the areas that are painted, uh, which is my main concern. All right, this uh, citrus strip works better if it can stay wet and with the heat that we've got out here today, this stuff just dries up in no time. So I'm gonna actually take a plastic garbage bag. We'll uh, put the whole part in here and we'll seal it up and uh, just let this stuff sit for several hours. Maybe be tomorrow before I get back to it, I don't know. All right. That is sealed up and we'll just let it sit. We've left this in here for about three and a half, four hours, and uh, then pull it out now and see if we can get this cleaned off. I'm just taking a little scraper here, and this is a little plastic scraper, and it's just taking most of this paint right off. And uh, but it doesn't get off with the scraper. Usually I can come in here, this is a little paint stripping tool and it's got a brush on it as well. And that brush will get down in there in those areas that I don't get with the scraper, but it's coming right off. So um, we'll work away at this for a few minutes and get it cleaned up. I think I'm gonna take this over to the parts washer now and uh, give it a good cleaning. We've done a little scrubbing, a little bit of elbow grease over in the parts washer. We've got all the old paint off of it. Uh, we got all the gunk and grime off of it. Uh, got the inside pretty well cleaned up. Um, you can see the original kind of just red paint in there, which was very common what they would put on the inside of these, just a protective coat. Uh, you know, I can't say that it's perfectly clean in there, but uh, it sure is a heck of a lot better than where we started. So where we're at now, uh, what I'm gonna do is get out the masking tape and start masking this thing up. There's a lot of uh, machine surfaces on here that we really don't wanna get paint into and uh, keep them clean. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. It's gonna be a tedious job. Uh, probably won't keep you on it with the camera the whole time, but uh, bring you back at the end. So I'm ready to start painting this. We got everything, all the machine surfaces that I'm worried about are, are masked off and uh, let's go ahead and put a good coat of paint on this.
Well, that's probably going to be a wrap on this uh, video. Uh, we've basically gone through, inspected, looked at the gearbox, showed you how it works, uh, taken it apart, and uh, we're in the process of getting it painted, cleaned back up. Uh, we get the other parts cleaned up in the parts washer, uh, just basically degreasing them in there, scrubbing them down real good, getting them all good and clean. And in the next episode, we'll come back and we'll reassemble this after this paint has a chance to dry uh, and put it back all together on the machine. So uh, look forward to seeing you again real soon. Thanks a lot for watching.